What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hey, real quick, do me a favor. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of August. And really, I just need your help by hitting that button. Also, if you do find value in this video, if you do like it, please hit that like button, share it with somebody that may be able to benefit from it. With all that being said, you guys are here for a reason. It's summer, it's hot, you probably got pots and you want to know how to deal with your heat intolerance. And that is exactly what I intend on helping you figure out in this video. In this video, I'm gonna give you the tips and tricks that I use for myself and use to get over my heat intolerance. Plus, I'm gonna give you the tips and tricks that I give to my clients that I train online remotely that also have POTS. So stay tuned to the end of this video. So with POTS syndrome, it seems to be that most people have some sort of temperature intolerance, whether it be cold or hot. In my experience, mostly people that have POTS suffer with heat intolerance, right? They have a problem with heat. And with heat intolerance, it's way harder to deal with than cold intolerance because with the cold, you can put on a bunch of layers, you can turn the heat on, you know, you don't necessarily have to go outside. Most people work from home, blah, 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 blah. But with heat intolerance, when the summer hits, boy, it freaking hits. And you can only take off so many layers until you start looking like me because I'm trying to deal with the heat in my house right now, probably because I've tried to film this video a few times and I'm getting hot trying to talk about it. But anyways, when I first got diagnosed with POTS, and even a little bit before that, I realized that heat was something that really did bother me. It really got to me um, and it got to me really easy. To be honest with you, growing up, I was always a person that was sensitive to heat anyways. I just like was, I was the kid that had the AC unit in my window in the middle of winter on full blast because I just couldn't get cold enough. So when I first got, when I first got diagnosed with POTS, I was like, okay, something's going on with me that is just a little bit different, right? I'm intolerant to heat. I know that I can't handle it as well. So I started trying to figure out how to deal with the heat. And what it came down to, the first thing that I figured out was that I wasn't properly hydrating myself. I have been a competitive bodybuilder up until this point, a competitive strongman um, competitor, a competitive power lifter. And up until this point, I had been drinking a gallon of water plus a day. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're fully hydrated, right? And when I dove into what the recommendations for people with POTS is, or what the recommendations for people with POTS are, the first thing that always pops up is sodium. It's always sodium. And when you really look at the amounts of sodium that they suggest for people with POTS, it's way higher than the average person, by the way. Um, I realized that I wasn't even getting like a quarter of that or a third of that. So immediately I tried to find an electrolyte supplement that had a lot of sodium and I started supplementing with sodium and that was an absolute game changer you guys I cannot stress enough how often I get on consultations like consultation calls with new clients that have pots and they always tell me that they're not supplementing with sodium and they are every single time not getting enough sodium in their diet when I have them track their diet and I see it in my fitness pal, they're getting like 1500 milligrams a day. And I'm like, dude, you have pot syndrome. You need to be taking in more sodium. So always I tell people, <clears throat> excuse me. I tell people to start supplementing with sodium, specifically the one, the supplement that I use is um, element LMNT. You guys can find those packets on Amazon, all that. The good thing about that is that there's a thousand milligrams of sodium in it. And there's other electrolytes in it too, that are essential. But anyways, as soon as I started supplementing with sodium, it was a game changer. Things changed. I personally now to this day, take four packets of that per day. Plus I salt everything to taste. So I'm probably getting in close to 6,000 milligrams of sodium a day. And you guys, I didn't start, I didn't start supplementing with four packets a day until recently. Normally I'll do three packets a day, but when I know that I have a competition that's gonna be in hot weather, I make sure that I supplement with four packets a day so I can get used to it. And I swear to you guys, every single time, it makes it better. It makes my symptoms better, it makes the heat better. And it's just, it really is a game changer. So now I take four packets of sodium every single day or four packets of element rather every single day. And I'm just gonna continue doing it. The next thing that I did was I started to try to work out in the heat and it would be little stints of time, right? Maybe I would do my warm up out in the heat or I'd go for a walk in the heat. I would just do whatever I could handle. And then throughout time, I would titrate my time up. 
I like to do everything in a very progressive manner. So I would start with a couple minutes outside, maybe doing my warm up, whatever, to eventually move into maybe a strength piece I would do outside, maybe a little bit of a run or a jog. And then I just full blown was doing workouts outside whenever I could in order to get used to the heat. So my opinion is, and my suggestion is, is if you're dealing with this, to start going outside intentionally, even for a little bit. If you can only handle two minutes outside, go and do two minutes outside. The good thing about this is that you're not gonna die probably. You're probably not gonna die from standing outside. What's gonna happen is you're gonna get uncomfortable, but my main thing is always get comfortable being uncomfortable when you're trying to get over pots. From what I know, nobody has died from pots yet. That's just from what I know. But a lot of what I hear is that people just say that they're uncomfortable. Well, I think that mentally you need to get a little bit tougher if you wanna live a normal life. That's just my opinion. I don't mean to offend anybody. Now, the third thing that I did, and this was the most important thing that I did, was I did heat exposure. I did sauna exposure. I did intentional heat exposure so that I could really, really get used to heat. So what happened was, is I actually saw an Andrew Huberman post about athletes in athletic performance in the heat and how they acclimate to the heat in order to perform in the heat, right? So I took a page from his book, basically, he doesn't actually have a book, but I took a page from his book and uh, I started exposing myself to heat in extreme conditions. So I would go to a sauna and actually I started off at, I think like five or 10 minutes and then slowly titrated my way up again. It just made sense to me. The sauna is 180 degrees. If I can get used to 180 degree ambient temperature in a small wood box, it's likely that I'll be able to be okay in 80 to 90 degree weather during summer almost all day. So I started with about two days a week at five to 10 minutes, and then I titrated up to where now, especially because I'm getting ready to compete in Joplin, Missouri, which is the most miserable city in the most, eh, I don't wanna say miserable state because it's actually an okay state the most miserable city in the hottest state that you can go to in August, I guess. Um, I'm in the sauna four times a week for 20 minutes. So those are the three main things that I did. Now, what I tell my clients to do is exactly what I did, exactly what I did, except I take a little bit of a slower approach. So with everybody I do, you know, their aerobic training. I try to figure out like how much aerobic volume can we handle? I get them fit cardiovascularly, aerobically. And then when it gets close to summer, like springtime, we start doing heat exposure therapy and it's for very, very small amounts of time. And we titrate up very slowly, the same way that I told you that I did it. But sometimes I start people with like a minute, two minutes, three minutes, and then we slowly go up in time or in days. Also, every single time that I start people with me, you can imagine what I tell, what I tell them about sodium and electrolytes. So anyway, guys, I hope that this video did help you out. I hope that you found some value from it. If you did subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, share it with some of your POTS friends. If you know anybody that has it or know anybody that can maybe just benefit from, you know, heat exposure and, 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 you know, beat heat intolerance. Anyways, I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. Hit me up on Instagram for coaching, JQ Fit Life. And we'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace out. Goodbye.